Hi there, my name is Lars Sørensen and you're watching this video that we've created for you over here at Computing 2019 in London. Uh, giving you all these video snacks to give you a hint of just of the exciting stuff that's going on right here. It's all about computing, but all uh, from different angles. And we're going to talk to uh, Dr. Esther Pearson from Lasso College in the United States. Yes. We're going to talk education, mm -hmm. which has my heart as an old uh, uh, teacher. Okay. Um, and I, I'm, I'm very curious to learn, to learn more. Uh, the paper that you've uh, sent in uh, is about a special program at getting students enthusiastic for uh, a STEM uh, direction. Mm -hmm. and just for people who might be from uh, uh, different cultures to understand uh, what STEM stands for. S science. Technology. Yeah. Engineering, engineering. And mathematics. And to get them into that direction. Yes. And just before we dive into that, can we just ask you, what was your inspiration or motivation to, to go into that direction as you are Professor in mathematics. Mathematics. Uh, mathematics. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. uh, my inspiration actually came from my my parents. I had an early exposure to what we now today call the STEM fields. Uh, my mother was a teacher of mathematics, and my father worked in construction. And so within that, uh, I was exposed early on, so that I didn't build up any phobias or stereotypes. Uh, in those areas. Uh, math was always a, a common everyday part of our lives and my father being in construction anything he showed my brother he also showed me and my sister so we were accustomed to having to wire a lamp to have to fix a leaky faucet and so we didn't grow up with any of those those uh, concerns that these particular fields were for men and these particular fields were, were for women. Everybody did everything that they were capable and wanted to do. And then would you say uh, that that has led uh, uh, even to uh, a, a more diverse um, uh, population in the STEM fields or are still very dominated by, uh, uh, by men? Or? I think it is still very dominated uh, by men as well as uh, there are shortages in the STEM areas, science, technology, engineering and mathematics majors and careers and it, it's cyclical. When there's a push that students should go into that area and a lot of efforts are put into it, then that rises, uh, the shortage decreases. But then after it gets to a certain level, people kind of forget about it mm. and then it goes back down and then another concerted effort has to be made to bring it back up. So it's, it's cyclical yeah. and we need to get to a point where it's, it's just steady state, especially in our our data intensive and media intensive society. Students from the youngest age need to be exposed to that and so that they grow up with the thought that I can pursue one of these careers and, and it's not something out of the ordinary. So in the STEPS uh, program uh, that the paper was also uh, 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 about and obviously there's this nice connection in the word STEPS. Mm -hmm. Getting people right, to make right, a step right. uh, towards yes. the STEM fields. Um, it focuses on demonstrating and a connected learning approach to, to STEM ac academics. Mm -hmm. Do you elaborate a little bit more on, on that? Uh, connected learning is certainly a, a focus and emphasis at LaSalle College in Newton, Massachusetts. And so STEPS uh, stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Pre-College Studies. Pre-college meaning before you get to high school or preparing for college to even at grade level start shaping students to focus on those STEM areas so that by the time they reach high school they've developed a curiosity about it, uh, a likability of those areas in which sometimes there can be phobias associated with them. And so then they're ready, both their mindset and the exposures they've had uh, to the STEM area to go forward in so it. So it's pretty much you're repeating the exposure that you that you had in it, your early. Uh, that would be correct. Uh, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. and, and how would you be doing this, like in an education environment, as uh, we don't all have the luxury to have a leaking faucet in our school right. or, or uh, the the, mm -hmm. um, the the facilities to wire a, a light bulb? Mm -hmm. uh, what 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 kind of uh, interventions are you doing to getting the children into mm -hmm. the exposure? Well, early exposures uh, in my paper, I'm, I'm dealing with uh, grassroots efforts and community efforts 
uh, for students to get involved, such that uh, community organizations are starting Saturday academies in the STEM area or after school hours uh, academies in the STEM area. Uh, so that students uh, obtain some exposure in school and then lots of exposure outside of school. And within the area of, of STEM, uh, you have to take a look at uh, the population. My population was indeed uh, female as well as minorities. And those are the two uh, population groups that are uh, considered to be a shortage uh, right now and what could be some very critical areas and jobs that need to be filled. And so starting with that particular population, a community organization would decide they're going to have, say for example, a Saturday academy, and then begin to recruit students, talk to the schools in the area, recruit uh, volunteers, put together curriculum, engage with an academic institution to hold courses uh, off hours or on a Saturday morning. And then, so you've uh, um, researched and, and saw uh, some of those uh, projects already, or those grassroots initiatives. And uh, were there uh, any that, that stood out for you, like a practical example of mm -hmm. maybe a local community uh, really uh, getting the people involved? Well, in the Massachusetts area, uh, because Massachusetts is, is heavily intensive in technology. That's it. MIT and in influence. academia, yes. And so from that standpoint, uh, exposures have been going on for a few years now. And so uh, just speaking of the STEM area, I've worked with thousands of students over the years. I just recently got a card from a student uh, who said, you know, I took a STEM class with you in the Saturday Academy a number of years ago and now I've completed a degree in pharmacology. I've been hired at one of the uh, major pharmaceutical companies as a pharmacist. She said I never would have even thought I was capable of something like that if I hadn't been involved in this, the STEPS program. So this would uh, underline the importance uh, maybe particularly of creating those environments where you can get exposed, as you yes, yes. Uh, say, uh, even uh, um, uh, around the schools, around the, mm -hmm. the education uh, systems. Right. I was, I was very fortunate from the fact that I had a, a familial relationship. My family was involved in STEM, so I had an early exposure. Uh, but some students, you know, their family, they don't have a doctor in their family, they don't have an engineer, they don't have a scientist in their family, and so those exposures are very limited. And so with providing uh, these Saturday academies or after school hour academies, it gives a student an opportunity to have exposure, not necessarily in their family, but in their community and gain an importance about those areas. Then you were here at the Computing uh, uh, Conference 2019 explaining about this work. Is this something that you will get the feeling that uh, the other visitors can, uh, can also take home and, and uh, maybe put, put in their own initiatives in creating enthusiasm for the STEM, STEM fields? That would certainly be the, the hope and the purpose uh, that more per people would take on uh, these type of initiatives uh, focusing on their level of commitment, their level of comfortability in doing something like that. I provide uh, in my paper uh, basically a template uh, for a STEM program and take a look at it from an educational view in terms of the taxonomy of educational objectives so that the components within uh, the program would include both cognitive components, affective components, as well as uh, psychomotor kind of components. So students have an exposure in what they're thinking, what they're feeling, and what they're doing. That's awesome. And then just on a personal level, as a mathematician, yes. uh, how are you experiencing the, the presentations that you're witnessing here? Oh, excellent. Uh, I think a lot of uh, math mathematics departments and colleges are now moving in the area of, of data science, mathematics and data science. And so with that in mind, uh, and my background is in electrical engineering, focusing specifically on technology, uh, this particular conference is, is just what I've been looking for and certainly enjoying. Well, good to hear that. And thank you so much for making some time available for us to just briefly uh, uh, address your, uh, your paper, which is 
much more wider than what we've addressed yes, just exactly. here. But to give you a hint, uh, a lot of our proceedings are all available on uh, online, and obviously the papers are also uh, also um, uh, uh, all. Um, no, I just can't get to the word. Uh, being uh, brought to you through Springer, our, uh, our partner. I want to thank you so much. If you want to see more interviews, please subscribe to our channel. We've been making them all available. Also, we have some lovely keynotes available for you uh, that we filmed for you. Uh, more on the Computing uh, Conference 2019 is uh, coming to you soon. Thank you for watching.